We are still in chapter 12, Renaissance and the Reformation, and we are in section 1, the Italian Renaissance. Specifically, this is the last lesson for this section, Searching for a Lost Da Vinci. So go ahead, log in to our Lodi USD website, and then Clever, from Clever, Cengage Learning, and Cengage Learning, log in your student account. It will lead you to our National Geographic book, World History book. Go straight to Unit 5, Chapter 12, Section 1, Lesson 6, pages 334 to 335. The chapter's essential question is how did new ways of thinking transform European culture? And our lesson's objective is to describe the efforts of researchers to find a long-lost painting of Leonardo da Vinci. In this lesson, we'll listen to David Yoder's uh, role as a photographer and the team's findings regarding this lost da Vinci art. Up to this point, there are a lot of people who are still obsessed of the idea that somewhere there are a lot of hidden um, artworks of the great Leonardo da Vinci. And Maurizio Serracini is one of these people. Serracini gathered a team including photographer Dave Yoder to help him find the hidden masterpiece. Well, the question is, will they find the lost da Vinci? Specifically, the team is looking for an artwork called the Battle of Anghiari uh, in one of the rooms of Palacio Vecchio. Well, this is a town hall of Florence, and that is in Italy. The fresco depicts uh, four men on horseback engaged in an intense battle. Leonardo had completed the Mona Lisa, but it was the Battle of Anghiari and other artists came to admire and copy. Well, here's the story. About 50 years later, after the painting of the, the fresco, a Renaissance artist and writer named Giorgio Vasari was asked to redecorate the town hall. However, legend has it that rather than destroy Leonardo's fresco, Vasari built a wall over the painting. He then painted his own battle scene on the new wall and Vasari preserved other great works in a similar way. Well, I'm sure whoever commissioned Vasari regretted this decision. Serrazzini, remember the Italian engineer who is uh, investigating this lost painting, believes that Vasari provided a clue to the painting's whereabouts. On a small flag in his painting, the artist wrote in tiny letters the Italian words, Serza Trova, which means seek and you shall find. At first, Serrazzini used non-invasive methods to reveal what he called a subtle gap behind the wall on which Vasari painted, which could have been constructed by Vasari himself to protect Leonardo's masterpiece. Well, uh, pay attention to this for additional information about the Battle of Anghiari and uh, the supposedly failed masterpiece of Leonardo da Vinci, which is uh, up to this moment, right? This very moment still is stirring a lot of uh, curiosity among researchers and historians and archeologists and different kinds of experts in um, different kinds of fields that are related to this subject. The wall to the right is devoted to the war in Siena and is subject to a famous mystery. It is 1505. The hall is still under Savonarola's influence. Low, simple and severe. Here we find two great artists at work. On the one hand, the young Michelangelo, fresh from the success of the David. And on the other, the wise Leonardo. They have been called to celebrate two important Florentine victories, according to the wishes of Gonfalonier Pier Soderini. Michelangelo's task is to paint the Battle of Cascina, which took place in 1364, during which the Florentines, after a surprise attack by Pisa, managed to thwart the attack and turn the tide of war. Leonardo must instead immortalize the moment when the Florentine troops 
managed to wrest the coat of arms from the Milanese army at Anghiari in 1440. Michelangelo prepares his sketch, but is then called by the Pope to go to Rome. Leonardo begins to paint the central scene of the story, a group of horses who are fighting for a flag. But he cannot use the fresco technique. It requires speed and readiness, which is opposite to his work method. He decides to experiment with encaustic, an ancient Roman technique in which the colors mixed with wax are applied with fire. The experiment is doomed to fail. The painting begins to drip rapidly and nothing holds. Leonardo abandons the project, but leaves a group of horses and men that is miraculous. So much so that 10 years later in 1513, a protective structure made of wood is put in place, a covering so that the painting is not ruined. We do not know how much of it Leonardo painted, or if Giorgio Vasari, committed to transforming the hall, preserved what survived, leaving a space between one wall and another. It is an ongoing investigation, and the mystery should one day be revealed. What is certain is that the two works, although unfinished, were for many years a reference for all artists. As Benvenuto Cellini says, while they stood there, they were the school of the world. Well, despite these promising leads uh, in discovering the Battle of Anghiari of Da Vinci, Italian authorities called a halt for further exploration in 2012. That is about eight years ago. Restorers protested the invasion of Vasari's masterpiece. Well, despite all these leads, uh, Italian authorities did believe Serazzini's theory. And as a result, the holes that they used for the endoscope were filled in and the scaffolding was taken down. Of course, people who are leading this exploration, such as Sarazzini and Yoder, are afraid that uh, this exploration will uh, be temporarily uh, be put on hold, and most likely they are hoping to find the, the right technology in exploring this artwork in a way that will not be invasive or destroy Vasari's masterpiece, the painting that is on top of the supposedly a work of Leonardo da Vinci, which is the Battle of Anghiari. Now, before you answer the review and assess questions, let's pay attention to Max Solomon as he discuss about uh, you know, the experience of making films about... Hi, my history. name is Max Solomon, and um, I'm a documentary filmmaker. I write and produce documentaries. And, um, you know, one of the things that it allows me to do is it allows me to really explore history and try to understand um, the past in a really compelling way, you know, and try to bring it back to life. And that's one of the things I really like about my job um, is really digging in and, and finding out what, 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 what really happened um, in, in some of the biggest stories that there are. Max, what made you want to be a filmmaker? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a very naturally curious person. I'm kind of was the annoying student that said, but, wh but, wh but why? But what about, you know, always asking one more question, I think. And, and this is a job where I get to ask questions. And I get to ask questions of a lot of really smart people. I try to ask smart questions. Or, and if you can bring something to the dialogue where you have an understanding of it or or you learn something, so oftentimes you're learning stuff together too. You know, it's, it's, it's really digging in and, 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 and asking questions, and that's what I love. I really like the part of it that, that lets me keep learning. It really, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm forever a student in, in what I do. So as a filmmaker, what do you like best about making films about history subjects? What's interesting about history as a, su as a subject is that it allows you to, um, explore a topic you think you know. So for example, when you're talking about someone like Leonardo da Vinci, right, we have we built him into a myth, right? We turned him into turned our historical figure into these 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 plaster busts, right? That aren't human anymore. Right? We 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 make myths about them. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool, what I really like is getting in there and figuring out, okay, this person was a human being like me or like you. Right? 
they and 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 was complicated, much more complicated than the versions that we have of them in in our textbooks uh, or or things like that. And and what I really like is I can get under the skin of a topic and suddenly find that real human person again. So there was a, a for example, there was a a film I worked on which was about Leonardo da Vinci, and he there's a story that he painted a mural in Florence in a palace that apparently there were a lot of problems with him and. Um, and the question is, what happened to the mural? Did it fall off the wall? The place was remodeled. It's inside a wall somewhere we don't really know. And a lot of it was searching for evidence of, did this thing really exist? Um, and if it did, well, how much of it did, existed? Did he finish it? Did he not finish it? Did he abandon it? And so as a part of like do, doing this research, um, uh, I got to go into the, into the medieval archives in Florence. Uh, the archive, they're called the Archives of the Medici. And... Um, and I, and we went in there on the on, and sort of knocked on the door and they let us in. They brought us in and we're walking through these tunnels and and you go in there and literally it's it's like it's like it's like the library I had in high school except for the fact that the books are you know the 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 books that the Medici themselves had and that their all their all their bookkeeping is kept and all of their accounting is kept and we're looking for um, the the essentially the recipe. That Leonardo used for the for the mural, for the ingredients for his paint, all of this stuff, and we're in there with an expert, and he literally just like there, this one, pulls this book off the shelf, and you have it at your hands, and and you're actually touching, and you see um, Leonardo da Vinci's name written down, and like literally the order that he placed, you know, like the way that you and I would order something on on Amazon, right, and the receipt. And like how much and what quantity and it's like his shopping list. So we, we suddenly had this aha moment of like here it is. You're touching history. You're actually seeing the artifact, and this is what he ordered. He, so it was a really big clue. But you've kind of it's like these Indiana Jonesy kind of moments that you have along the way. Obviously, Indiana Jones is fiction, but you get to you get to touch that and 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 see it and be there. And it, and suddenly you know this 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 mythological Leonardo da Vinci. I mean is alive in a way that he wasn't ever before, if that makes sense. What would you tell a student who wants to be a, a documentary filmmaker, maybe of history films, what, what would you tell them to do? Um, so understanding history is really important to what I do. So I, so I went to university and, and there I, I studied um, classics, so Greek literature, Greek plays, all that you know, drama, uh, different kinds of, of stories really. And what was really interesting was seeing how other people had told stories and understanding how those stories were constructed. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, we're all, what I do is storytelling. Um, so when I, one of the things I really like doing is, is trying, to, trying to bring that history back to life for me. Because history, like anything, it's an abstraction. but what so one of the challenges about making films about history is that you have to, you know, somebody tells you they want you to make a film about ancient Rome or uh, some historical topic, but you can't film it because ancient Rome doesn't exist anymore. So I had this assignment where I had to bring ancient Rome back to life, early, early Rome, sort of the story of early Christians in Rome. So um, we went to Morocco, which is a really cool place, um, sort of on in northern Africa. Um, and there they have these film studios that... Um, you walk into these sets have been standing out there in the desert so they don't rot really. and they've built Rome and you can turn in any direction and it's Rome so there you are you're standing in a set where yeah if you look on the back side it's all you know paper mache and you know sticks and stuff holding it up but when you are in these spots you're completely surrounded by someplace and we had to try to bring Rome back to life. So I, I'd done my research. I talked to a bunch of experts, and I talked to a bunch of art directors. I talked to the woman who was the art director for a big movie that had been filmed, and she said, "When you think about Rome, don't think about um, don't think about those plaster statues of people like going like this. Think about Calcutta, India. Right? You don't have plumbing. You don't have um, you don't have packaged food. You don't have supermarkets." Also think about the way that, that these people are dressed, right? Yes, people are wearing, you know, sort of tunics and then, you know, this, like a, like a, uh, some kind of big piece of cloth, right? The biggest, you know, that, that culture still exists in India. People wear them as saris. But when you see how people wear saris, you're constant. everyone has their own way of wearing them. And so this was something that helped us with costume design. We pulled all these little clues together of how do people actually interact with this stuff and make it real, make it their own, make it come alive. 
and um, we created this market scene. And this one of our one of our characters is wandering through Rome, trying to find the early Christians, essentially. And um, what started to happen on the set, because we never yelled "cut," we just let things unfold, was that people started to make the history real. We suddenly found ourselves in the middle of a of a of a second century Roman market. And suddenly, I was transported. I was time traveling. Really, I was I was in another time in ancient Rome, uh, in a market. That was really cool. So, so making documentaries, especially documentaries about history, is the closest way, closest thing you can have to to, to experiencing what it's like to be a time traveler. You know, because the moment that that history comes back to life, back to life, um, you you get a you can interact with it. Max, why is it important for students to study world history today? I, th I think there's two reasons. One is that we live in a really complicated world. Things are happening in, you know, in Syria, in the Middle East, in, 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 you know, in, in Africa that, that are complicated. And if you want to really understand why they're happening the way they are and, ho and, how, and how, what role we play in, in, as, as people in the world, to being able to able to stop some of these really horrible things or make good things happen, you have to look at the store at what happened before, and to try to maybe understand some of these problems, you have to understand why people feel this way. It's like looking at an argument, like you know, if your if your brother and sister are arguing at the table, you can't have to understand they're not just arguing about this moment; they're arguing about what they did to each other the last time they fought, right? So there's a really important thing about understanding why. If you want to understand what's happening today, you have to understand what happened before. So that's one really important part of it. I, I mean, I think that one of the one of the important things about history, I think, is also to when you look at history, history is written by somebody, and and that person who writes that history might have it wrong, right? There are things that we think happened um, that might not have happened exactly the way that the person that wrote it down and let it happen. And so, if you dig in history and you look at these what we call primary sources, sometimes you can really find really interesting things that are really you know, either controversial or, or, or start to give you a, a different, there's new stuff to be found in history. That sounds like an oxymoron, but there's a lot of stuff that we don't know yet about our past that, that we still need to discover. Okay, now let's go to the review and assess questions. Reading check. What does Serazzini think is hidden behind Vesari's fresco? Number two, analyze cause and effect. What event brought the search to a halt or stop? Number three, form and support opinions. Do you think the search for the lost Da Vinci should continue? Explain why, why yes, or why not? Now go ahead, go back to our Google Classroom and open the chapter 12, section one, the Italian Renaissance review and assess assignment and answer the review and assess questions. That would be the last slide in this digital packet. This will be the last slide or the last lesson, section 1.6. Be sure that you are filling up all the basic information, last name, first name, class period, date, and the key vocab, the Battle of Hungary. And of course, um, be sure that you are uh, putting the right lesson title and the right answers, of course, for the review and assess questions. And if you want to get the full credit on top of the fact that you are giving the right answers, you need to write in complete sentences as well. Now go ahead, double check if you have completed this uh, digital packet, section one of chapter 12. And after that, you can turn it in. Otherwise, you have until 10 p.m. tonight.